Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Films, I'm back with another tutorial for you. Uh, this is going to be our sky tutorial number two, uh, using a technique what I'm going to call the bullseye technique. Uh, I've seen other people use this, but I never saw it before I started using it. Uh, I'm going to call it the bullseye technique, and uh, it's something I developed back in 2010, and I've been using it ever since. Basically, it's uh, a bright color in the middle, working darker as you go work, uh, work your way out. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to just show you guys the colors that we're going to be using today. I have a tub of medium-bodied bright white, some yellow ochre, a little uh, phthalo green, some uh, Mars black, and I think some hookers are green as well. I think there's some yellow in that mix, too. I, I can't really remember. And uh, this video, we're starting with uh, a th thicker layer of white, and uh, just really blending that in, getting a nice white center. Uh, this video is sped up just a little bit to, you know, compress time. It's normally about, normally about 14, 15 minutes, but I took it down to about half, so it's about seven now. Uh, we're grabbing, I don't know what this color is first. Now the concept of uh, the, the bullseye sky is that everything is very circular. Uh, I'm just sort of doing a few crisscross motions and adding water to keep uh, my, my paint fluid but still thick enough to be able to work with. Okay, now I'm adding uh, yellow and possibly a tiny little bit of green to this. And I still want to keep that uh, white center in there just a little bit. I'm working both thick and fluid at the same time. It's a very difficult thing to try and grab, but uh, for the sake of this just grabbing that in. And uh, now we're grabbing a, a two inch wide brush here. You can just use a regular house painter brush. This is a more specifically for acrylic painting, but uh, you know, you get the idea. And you notice how I'm turning that and moving it circular so I don't crisscross the paint and drag yellow into white. So make, I was making sure that uh, stayed uh, that same circular motion. You'll, you'll see me do that again in just a moment here. Now we're adding yellow and a little bit of green together. Uh, I'm not sure which green. I honestly can't remember right now, but uh, you know, some kind of a green, and uh, it's sort of the sappy whitish green color. Again, you see me doing that thing with the brush, making sure I don't uh, turn the brush, I just rotate it in order to keep the uh, the soft and, and subtle blending together. And it's, you know, real real quick motion there, just trying to keep everything together uh, while it was still wet. Now mixing uh, my next dark color. Uh, this is, I'm adding a little bit of gray to this because this particular piece I want to have sort of a, a slightly washed out kind of color to it. Now when you're adding the layers, I'm putting in them literally right next to the, uh, the color previous, but I don't want to start by blending it in. I want to keep them separate and then blend it in uh, separately uh, as uh, with another brush. So in this case we're just adding our color all around it and then going in with that brush again to blend it. And again, we're not making sure, you know, you turn your hand in such a way that you won't take the uh, the dark paint that's uh, attaching itself to the brush and drag that into the lighter section, because, you know, obviously that would be a problem. <coughs> now our, our piece is starting to take shape here. We're mixing up, a, you know, another darker color. I think this, this layer, I believe, is going to be a little more green than it is gray. Generally, with with a piece like this, you kind of get this uh, sense of uh, a real thick fog. Yeah, see, see this layer is a lot lot greener, and we're this particular green layer we're taking into the previous layer a little more than uh, the other ones, uh, just to kind of keep things uh, moist and, and moving. I'm just throwing in pretty much the paint I have left, and when you do a painting like this, you want to make sure you mix up enough color. Uh, I ran into a problem here uh, several times that I ran out of paint uh, most of the way through. And you're actually going to see me leave the corners uh, free, which I went uh, another color darker because I ran out of paint. And again, you know, you, you don't want to run out of the color you're working with because uh, a lot of times it can be a little more difficult to mix up uh, the same color again and to get it, you know, just perfect. So again, adding, you know, water where I can just to keep it workable. Taking that brush again, just blending it in together. 
And if you have trouble, you know, sort of rotating your hand or, or keeping the brush level, you can always rotate your canvas and makes things significantly easier. But for the sake of this tutorial, I wanted to keep the canvas uh, in one direction to make sure the guys don't get real dizzy. And at this point, I think I might have flipped my brush around, but, you know, considering that we're working a little bit darker, it doesn't matter as much. And, uh, I'm wiping it off. Whatever I gather, that I'm going back in to work into the lighter section uh, from the darker section. I'm just you know, just wipe off whatever I need to there. Uh, and here, you know, I'm just trying to work my way to the edges, but realizing I just don't have anywhere near enough paint. And adding water at this point would be a mistake because it would thin it out far too much. Uh, this is a, a mop brush. I'm just going in, you know, subtle blending. Uh, if you've seen my uh, video on which brushes to get, mop brush in this case, I imagine. Or, or the, the mop brush, I, I mentioned that it's not necessary, but it does help for the subtle blending, and this is the particular type of subtle blending that it's absolutely perfect for. Uh, you see I went from dark into light, but I wiped it off right there, just to, you know, make sure I don't drag any of the dark paint right into the light. I want to keep our subtle blending and still make sure uh, everything flows together nicely. Now we just went a little bit darker with a little more green and just a slight, tiny little bit of black. Just, you know, touching off our corners there. And uh, making sure my edges are, are touched up. Now, a lot of times you might see me painting the bottom. At this point, I already know that uh, the whole bottom is just going to be this, this uh, section of grass. So I didn't really bother painting uh, the underside of the canvas at this point. I made sure I take care of that later, though. Now we take our, our mop brush, which oftentimes is a really hard one to dry out after it's been in water. So I'd spend you know the, probably a good uh, 30 seconds there drying it off. And again, we're just you know subtle blending. I'm holding that real far back just to let the brush do the work. And uh, a lot of the you know the edging you know going to be covered up too by by some trees I'll have in this piece. But again, you know just work on some subtle blending, pulling that together. And as you can see in uh, just the double speed that that really comes together. Well, that's about it for this tutorial today. Uh, that's pretty simple, how to make a, a bullseye sky. The next thing I'm going to do is just take a pencil and drop in my horizon line, and this piece will be ready to go. For more tips and tutorials, uh, stay tuned here to the DMC Films channel here on YouTube, and see you guys next time.